Hi, I'm Bill Kinney, and this is my second video where I'm doing problems from Chapter 3 of the Mathematics of Investment and Credit by Samuel Brogman. Chapter 3 is about loans and paying them back. This is going to be an old actuarial exam problem, 3.1.2s. It's about finding the outstanding balance on a loan after a certain payment, and there's a little wrinkle thrown in. The loan is paid back not with level payments, but with a geometrically decreasing sequence of payments. So we have a loan. In other words, say the bank is giving you some money to, for example, buy a car. You're borrowing that money. You need to pay it back. It's an amortized loan. You're paying it back with a sequence of payments over time. In this case, it's over five years with monthly payments at a nominal interest rate of 9% compounded monthly. The first payment is $1,000 and is to be paid one month from the date of the loan. In other words, the, the uh, amounts that you pay back over time form an annuity immediate. Each succeeding monthly payment will be 2% lower than the prior payment. So that's what makes it a geometrically decrease, decreasing sequence of payments. They're not level. They, you keep multiplying the preceding payment by 0.98 to get the next payment. Calculate the outstanding loan balance immediately after the 40th payment is made. All right, so let's draw our number line. We'll think of time as being in months. We want to find the outstanding balance at time 40 immediately after that 40th payment. There are 60 months in five years, so we'll end at time 60. The first payment of 1,000 is at time 1. The second payment is 2% lower than that, 98% of that, which would be 980. Let's write that instead as 1,000 times 0.98. The third payment at time 3 will be 1,000 times 0.98 times 0.98. In other words, 1,000 times 0.98 squared. The next one would be 1,000 times 0.98 cubed, etc. At time 40, the payment is going to be 1,000 times 0.98 to a power that is 1 less than the month because you can see the pattern here, for example, it's a square there when it's time 3. This is going to be the 39th power. At time 41, it'll be 1,000 times 0.98 to the 40th power, etc. The last payment will be 1,000 times 0.98 to the 59th power. We want to find the outstanding balance of this loan and this payback with this payback scheme at time 40, at time 40, immediately after this payment right there. It would be best to use the prospective method here. That outstanding balance is going to be the present value of the payments that remain. Present value at time 41 period before that payment right there. So we'll find the present value of this as an annuity immediate, but again, they're not level payments. The retrospective method, looking backward in time, is perhaps not as easy here because we'd have to know what the original balance was. We could find that, but it would take more work. Seems that the prospective method is going to be best here to find OB40 outstanding balance at time 40 immediately after that, that payment at time 40. All right, so by what I just said, that loan balance at time 40 is gonna be the present value of this thing, this sequence, this annuity, as an annuity immediate, find its present value one period before the first payment there. Let's go ahead and write that out as a, as a sum. You've got 1,000 times 0.98 to the 40th power. That payment needs to be discounted back by one year, or one month, I should say, multiplied by V, where V would be the monthly discount factor, not the annual one. And then the next term would be 1,000 times 0.98 to the 41st at time 42, but that needs to go back in time by two months. Multiply it by v squared, etc. The last payment at time 60 has a present value equal to 1,000 times 0.98 to the 59th power times v to the 20th power. We go back 20 months from month 60. This is a, uh, not only do the payments form a geometrically decreasing sequence, but the present value sum forms a geometrically decreasing sequence. The terms do at least. It's a geometrically decreasing series. 
a finite one. And therefore, you can find that present value by using the formula for such a finite geometric series. It's the first term, which I can write as 1,000 times 0.98 to the 40th times v times 1 minus the common ratio to the power equal to the number of terms. The common ratio is going to be what you need to multiply each term by to get the next term. I need to multiply by a 0.98 and a v. So I'll have a 0.98 and a v, and they both get raised to the 20th power because there are 20 terms in this sum. And then you divide by 1 minus the common ratio, 0.98 times v. All right, so let's find, first of all, v. I'll go ahead and, and I could use my calculator with some storage functions here. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, but I'll write things down as well. So first of all, again, the nominal interest rate is 9% compounded monthly, so that's an annual rate compounded monthly. To find the monthly interest rate, I'd need to take 0 0.09 and divide it by 12. 0 0.0075. Therefore, V, the monthly discount factor, is going to be what I get when I add 1 to this and take the reciprocal. 0.992555583. Let me store that in register 0. Let's also multiply it by 0.98. I'll go ahead and write it down even though I could just store it. 0 0.9727471. Let's store that in register 1. Uh, let's also, before I do these subtractions here, let's also find this thing, the, the first term. So I've got 0 0.98 to the 40th power. Looking right there. Times V. V was in register 0 times a thousand. This thing right there has a value equal to 442.382535. Four, four, Let's store that in register two. All right, I think I'm ready to, well, okay, let's, let's find this as well and store it in register four. 0.98V is in register one. Recall one, oops, there it is. Uh, subtract that from one. Let's store that in register three. I'll write it down as well, 0 0.0272959529. Store that in register three. All right, lots of things stored. Okay, let's go ahead and compute this. Take 0.98b from register one and raise it to the 20th power, recall 1 to the 20th power, subtract it from 1, divide by what's in register 3, and now multiply by what's in register 2. Final answer, which is correct, I see by looking at it, I know the final answer is 6889 round to the nearest cent, you'd have 11 cents. Okay, so again, we use the prospective method for finding the outside balance at time 40, and we needed to use the formula for a finite geometric series to help us find the final answer.